recessional this morning. The, the purple tape is because we have a little bit of water damage uh, from the storms. Uh, so I wanted you to be aware of that. Um, we are drying it out and I think we'll be in good shape. Uh, but uh, we will be heating the warning of that tape this morning. And uh, we'll have our kids corner on the right side of me here, on the piano side this morning uh, for that reason. Uh, so glad to have you here worshiping with us in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, if you're a guest or a visitor, we're especially glad to have you here this morning. You're an honored guest to hear uh, for us. We're so glad that, that you chose to be here at Rosewood First Baptist. We have uh, some new uh, welcome cards, connect cards we're calling in the pews. Um, if you will take a few moments to fill that out, if you would, if you are uh, visiting with us, we'd like to get to know your family a little bit better. And uh, you can help us in doing that by filling that out. And at the end of the service, there is an offering box on either side. You come out the doors and you can just drop an offering box. And we hope the service will be a blessing to you and your family. And we really enjoy having you here and look forward to following up and get to know you a little bit better in the future. We're also um, asking uh, regular membership if you would help us with your current information. I think we have quite a few. Uh, these cards that have come in and uh, you can also send an email in different ways as well but if you're here in person this is just one way it's more way that you can get us your current information and then drop in the offering box as well we uh, greatly appreciate that uh, lord is doing some wonderful things in our midst uh looking forward uh, to a baptismal service uh in a few weeks and uh, god is really moving in the lives of those around us and those that are uh, part of our ministry. So looking forward to that. Wanted you to be aware of that. It is forthcoming in the month of August. And uh, we'll celebrate with them and their families uh, that morning. Uh, I'm going to bring up now Stacy to make some other important announcements. So glad to have you here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope y'all are all doing fantastic this morning. Um, a couple of quick announcements. Next Sunday, the 23rd, is Youth Sunday. Youth will be running the show that day, so it should be quite exciting, something a little different that we are working on. So we would love to have all of your support by being here that Sunday. And on the 29th, which is a Saturday, any able body, we would love to have you out here at approximately 8.30 in the morning. Maybe we can have you a cup of coffee or something. We are having um, playground equipment delivered, and we need help getting the playground set up because we would really like to have that set up by um, our family, our church picnic, which will be on August 5th. So if you have any questions, you can contact myself, Pastor Tim, Miss Judy, Mr. Steve Brogdon, any of us. We will have a crew out here to build a playground. Yeah. So we're excited about that. And if you'll just take a minute to read over everything in the bulletin, do not forget our collection for Operation Christmas Child. Miss Carolyn Bryce will put a thank you in the bulletin um, for everyone that went by, called, text, drove by, honked their horn to tell her happy birthday. And I think that is all I have. Good morning and welcome to worship. Our call to worship this morning just really makes it clear who God is to us. He's a way maker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. And he is here this morning, healing moons, healing hearts, blessing those who need to touch. This morning, would you stand with us as we sing about our way to go? <laughs>
morning. All right, so I brought something with me this morning, and I thought I'd just go ahead and let you have one of these. But does anyone know what, what's inside of these little packets? Food. Food? Well, yeah, you're yeah, right. Seeds. Seeds that can be made into food. There you go. That's right. So, what? You know, you got everything. So, now that you Alright, so we have some seeds. And yes, food. That when these seeds are planted, that you can potentially get possibly what's on this picture here. I have watermelon. Some of y'all have, you said, what do you have? Peas. See what else do I have? Spinach, lettuce, and watermelon too. I think those are the ones that I had uh, picked out for you. So yes, that would be really neat, really great. I'm sure if you've lived here any amount of time, you've gone by a farm, haven't you? And you've seen farmers out there working, that's what they do. They, they plant things and then they grow it so that we will have food to eat. And so we're very thankful for them. And they do that for us. Not just us, for, but for a whole bunch of people. That food goes all, all over the place. Supermarkets and all over the place. So seeds are really important. They're very important to start that growing process. But there's more to it. There's more than that. If we just kind of left it in this package, you wouldn't do very much, would it? It would just say a seed, wouldn't it? In fact, it'd probably just go bad at some point. Um, but yeah, we have to do something with it. We have to plant it, don't we? Yeah. You ever planted something before? Yeah, I have a garden. Yeah, you have a garden. So what, what do you have to do with it? I plant a coconut. A coconut. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah, coconut tree. Yes. All right. That is a process and a half. Uh, I don't think it's come up yet. Before <laughs> I can tell you, Pastor Ted is not a green thumb. We don't do these things real well in our house, but we have tried before. So you tried before, but it didn't, it didn't work. Pretty good. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. You burned it before and it, it did. So sometimes when you try to plant it, it, it does grow something. And sometimes it doesn't work. That happens too. It does. Um, Jesus was telling uh, a story once and he was talking about this. He was saying that sometimes when the things are planted, there was some that went and planted some seeds. And um, some of it worked and some of it didn't. And then the reason it didn't work is sometimes the, the right things weren't done. Like it wasn't planted in good soil. So that's one of the things that I have learned even though it's not worked really well for me over the years, but it's, I have one. You have to have good soil. It's dirt. Y'all ever play in the dirt? Yeah. And the soil is like dark dirt. It's really kind of, it's kind of nasty stuff. But anyway, but it does its job, right? It has its purpose. And when you put your hands in it, your, your fingers are going to get real dirty and, and colored. So, but it's important. You have to put it in there and it has to help it grow. You also need rain. Um, and there's other things that, that you need to take care of it. You know, you have to kind of stir up the ground as well uh, so that it can have a place to grow. And so Jesus said, that's a lot like our life. We have to do things uh, in order to grow, in order to, to have a good outcome and get the best possible outcome. We have to do things. And sometimes we don't do what we need to do to do. Sometimes you know, we may be asked to do something, maybe mom and dad ask you to do something like a chore, and you, you forget, or you tell them no, and that doesn't end too good, does it? We get in trouble, typically. And other times, we do what we're supposed to do, and we, we allow something good to come out of that, all right? So Jesus said, it's a lot like that when you grow stuff, when you've grown stuff before, a lot of us have, it's a lot like that in our life. We have to do the right things uh, so that we can anticipate a good outcome, all right? So... I hope that maybe you can tell me later, I know it'll take some time, maybe some of you can tell me if some of these seeds work for you. I don't know. 
I'm not sure that it would work really good in our household, but maybe we'll give it a try ourselves and see what happens. I don't know about a coconut tree, but um, we'll let you know what does go on. All right, so let's go to the Lord in prayer and thank Him and ask Him to help us uh, to do those good things so that we can have those good results. All right, let's pray. Dear God, help us to uh, do the things that you've asked us to do, those good things, such as coming to church and uh, just telling other people about you. And as we, we read uh, the Bible, we read more about you, we learn uh, your word, your scriptures, Lord, and that we can uh, tell others about that as well, Lord. Help us to, to be kind to others as well, and especially to our friends and family, Lord, that we can just do our best in practicing there with the ones that that love and care for us most, so, so that when we're around others, we don't know, or maybe at school, uh, where we can practice that, what we learn, Lord, and, and be good to others, that they too might know that they're loved by you, in Jesus' name, amen. Lots of fun. I can tell it is still summer, and they're enjoying themselves as they should. Uh, so it's so good to see our children here this morning. If you want our, our prayer list uh, that we need to continue to lift up and, and to uh, remember, um, remember um, Joe uh, Gurley. She's come through her surgery well, but um, is at home recovering, and uh, she even said she would try to come this morning, but I'm glad she didn't try to push that, uh, but we were praying for her, and, and just really uh, pleased to hear that news that surgery went well. Um, others this week had uh, surgeries postponed, and we do have a few with upcoming surgeries. I know Joanne Smith's another one that many have been praying for, and uh, from, um, from what I know, the surgery did uh, she came through well with that. It was just a very long surgery. Um, this is, of course, from our community, so we want to lift, lift her up and others on our hearts and minds uh, this morning. I want to add to that as well uh, a special family uh, that has been a part of this church family for quite some time, and they're going to be moving uh, next week and down to be close to, to their family. Uh, to their grandchildren, to their son. So I like to uh, lift up a special uh, word of, of thanks to them and just blessings to uh, Sandy and Glenn Turner. This will be their last Sunday with us this morning. Uh, so I wanted you to know how much in the short time that I've been here, I've just enjoyed getting to know you and uh, just already have seen how connected you are with this community and this church family and and just how much you have done uh, to serve the Lord and been faithful during your time here. So we just wish you well as you go uh, and what God has in store for you there in Florida. So we'll be praying for you, especially uh, as we know hurricanes and other fun things happen in Florida too. Uh, as you pray for us, we pray that uh, you would do that. And uh, God, what God has in store for us here at Rosewood. Let's go to the Lord in prayer now and we approach you for an embrace together. Dear Lord, we are so thankful to you this morning for your many provisions. And Lord, they come in, in so many different ways. Sometimes it's just a smile on, on someone's face that can just make our day and turn a, a difficult this situation and, into a, a time of, of joy and celebration and, and just realizing that you are here, you're with us. Or that we are not abandoned or forgotten or left alone. But Lord, you're with us and you'll continue to guide us and direct us as we are faithful to, to follow you and to seek you. And Lord, to be obedient to your calling upon our life. Lord, we, we pray for Glenn and Sandy, Lord, as they go. Lord, we are just so thankful that we've had the time we've had uh, with them and just the blessing they've been not just to Rosewood First Baptist, but to this Goldsboro community. 
And Lord, we just pray blessings on them as they go. Lord, to provide better for their family. And to spend this precious time and moments, uh, Lord, with their family. So, Lord, we do pray a special blessing on them and safe travels and just the, the next kind of step in, in, the, in life and their journey, Lord, is they consider, continue to follow you, Lord, there and the, where you would have them to serve in that community. Lord, may we be found faithful as well as we seek to reach out with your love in this community and with the good news of Christ and the saving knowledge and, and power that comes with having a relationship with Christ and forgiveness of sins or that abundant and full life and the life everlasting promise in your word. And so, Lord, we ask that you would be with us as we seek to reach out to others in these outreach events and opportunities as those come in our midst, Lord. And we have uh, the wonderful opportunity to minister to them and, and where they find themselves and the needs that they have. That, that all their cares could be cast upon you, Lord, knowing that you care for us. So, Lord, we, we lift up those on our, our prayer list, those that we have concern over, those who have gone through surgery. Lord, we're praising you for the uh, good outcome of surgery and now recovery that begins. And others that are uh, having upcoming surgeries and procedures and continue to be uh, finding themselves in a sense uh, of at home and just waiting on, on things to heal. Lord, I, I just pray for patience. Uh, Lord, also just to reassure them, remind them that you're with them. Uh, Lord, that the anxiety or fear that they have, Lord, I, I pray that would be turned to a, a sense of, of confidence and, and reassurance in you and trust in you. And no matter what we face in life, nothing, nothing can separate us from your love. So Lord, I pray this morning as we come to this place, Lord, we've gathered as the body of Christ. Lord, to worship you. And may we do so as you call us to do, in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Would you stand as we sing one of the great songs, one of the great hymns of the church? How great thou art.
morning. Good morning. This morning, we're going to look at a passage that is, is fairly familiar to us. Um, if we're familiar with some of the parables uh, that Jesus told, as we know, parables are uh, earthly stories with heavenly meanings, but they also have meaning for life here and now. Uh, but they, they have emphasis on uh, heaven, on the kingdom, especially we're going to look at this morning uh, from this parable found in Matthew's Gospel, the 13th chapter. So if you will uh, go there with me first this morning, uh, beginning in verse 1. The scripture says, That day Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea. And large crowds gathered to him. So he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd was standing on the beach. And he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on rocky places, where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up. Because they had no depth of soul. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among the thorns. And the thorns came up and choked them out. And others fell on the good soil and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Moving down to verse 18, Jesus gives us an interpretation of those of this parable. It says, Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. And the one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but it is only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. And the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word, and the worry of the world, and the deceitfulness of wealth, chokes the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And the one on whom seed was sown on the ground, on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundred some 60, and some 30. May God add his richest blessing to the reading of his word this day. And you can look on your insert. Some of you I know were following along on uh, the screen, but you can uh, follow along with the insert. We'll have some points there for uh, this service, for this sermon. But essentially, uh, this again is a, a parable and so it is to be interpreted. So first to understand that is it is right and good for us to look at it in that way. It is meant to represent something else. Uh, it's not to stand on itself alone. So, so a, a simple way of looking at this parable, and this chart kind of makes it easy for us to understand, but we have some characters in, the, in this story. We have uh, the, the sower. The sower, the one who sows the word of Jesus. And then we have uh, the, the seeds, which is uh, the word uh, of God, the, the message of Jesus. And then the soul essentially is us, the, the hearts of, of men and women. And, and we, we essentially have a, a, a story that talks about our relationship with God through Christ. And, and with his, his word that, that penetrates uh, the hearts of those who accept it. And so this morning we're going to look at uh, the different 
types of hearts that receive this message. And we're going to focus a little bit more so on the soul. You know, there are different types of people. Uh, and therefore, the message of God, when it goes out, is received in different ways, accordingly. So Jesus is basically talking about that, that uh, you know, the word of God stays the same and it goes out and that people just take it differently. And so uh, really the focus here is more so on that soul, on that soul, even though, uh, you know, there's been said it's the parable of the sower and then we're talking about uh, the word of God that goes out and, you know, uh, the word of Christ that goes out through his word and just this message that is either received or not received. Uh, and it really is hinging on uh, that person and their relationship um, with the Word of God. So the first uh, type of heart that we encounter is a hardened heart. Hardened heart. And uh, Jesus says this is a picture of someone that's been trampled by life. Beaten down, we might say, by life. And because it is so hard that the city just sits and lays right on top. And, and we've all seen this before. We've all experienced hard ground or clay or whatever you want to call it. But, but it just doesn't break well. And in fact, it doesn't break at all sometimes. And so uh, the seed just sits on the top and, and the birds just come by and, and ate it up. It, it just didn't get very far. And it's very easy to understand why someone might be hardened in life. There's lots of reasons why uh, life is, is difficult, can be very challenging. And if you don't have difficulty, maybe personally in your life, you can witness and experience hardship of others and, and be hardened to life. Just turning on the news, you, you find all these stories of this terrible stuff that's gone on all around you, maybe during your day or week that you didn't even realize happened. Um, I don't turn on the news very often, quite ever, but I, I read the news lots of times on my phone, but I, I miss many days, and so I catch up with things, and I think, wow, all that stuff happened, uh, you know, in this short period of time, and it's so easy to get parted and desensitized uh, to the hardships of life and the hardships that others experience. So we, we can't just uh, dismiss this and say, well, they're going to be those, uh, you know, that are just hardened. You know, they're just predispositioned to that uh, because of their condition and state. And therefore, you know, there's just not much we, we can do about it. I mean, we certainly have to be, uh, you know, loving and caring and sensitive uh, to that people are just hardened many times to receiving the gospel. And we know these types of, of people. We can uh, observe it as being somewhat cynical. You know, many times because of our experiences, we, we think there's, there's some sort of hidden agenda. And certainly as you're sharing a message like the gospel, people are thinking, well, this is just too good to be true. You know, how could God uh, love and care for me in that way with, without, uh, you know, concern for um, all the things that I've done. You know, how could God just, you know, take me for who I am? You know, why would God love me in, in such a way? There must be something behind that. Um, it, it might be that someone thinks it's, uh, things are being manipulated. You know, they're, they're used to being manipulated, kind of the bait and switch type thing. Uh, we, we may say this is kind of like the telemarketer scheme or whatever, you know, this is a bait and switch. I'm going to show you the good stuff first, and then I'm going to kind of throw in the bad news at the end, so to speak. You know, kind of what's the catch, catch to it all. It's, it's that hardened heart that just is, has a hard time dealing with and accepting the love of God in Christ. And so therefore, um, it, it's just hard for a breakthrough to happen in their life. And believe it or not, it's not just out there in the world. Uh, before, it, you know, we have this picture of them and us, we need to understand it, it happens among believers too. It happens within the church. There's hardened hearts 
uh, to the things of the church because of experiences. Maybe maybe a previous experience at a church or ministry, and it was just, just gone bad, and so now you're hard into that. You don't want anything to do with uh, maybe the, the church or certain aspects of the church. You're kind of fearful or uh, you don't really want uh, to engage in that. Um, in helping others, you know, serving others, it's wonderful a uh, feeling to know that you've helped someone in need. And I think that's just the spirit of God working in and through us. But uh, what about those who come back time and time again? And, and we see this where people come asking for things, uh, money or possessions or whatever, because uh, they have need. And, and it's, it's easy to get hardened by that because we can't trust maybe what they're saying because the stories kind of seem to sound the same. You know, I've fallen on hard times because of a family struggle or I'll pay you back might even be a phrase that is uttered uh, when I have the chance. And all these kind of empty and shallow promises and, and we kind of pick up on the falsehoods quickly and we become hardened uh, to the needs and the plight of others. So it's not just them and us, it's really all of us have the potential to have that hardened heart. And it's very, very hard to avoid. So the result is that the seed of the kingdom of God never comes to fruition because of this hardened heart. The, the second type of heart that is mentioned is a distracted heart. A distracted heart. I loved this image. It was like, you know, here's my brain, you know, taking me on a little trip somewhere, uh, taking my heart, you know, wherever it goes. You know, your mind sometimes has a sense of wandering and uh, being distracted, and some of us more so than others, and understand what that's like. You know, that's that squirrel thing, you know, that happens to some people, and they can easily get off of the focus that God has and the path that God has for us in our lives. Um, but Jesus says, this is the seed that fell on the thick briar patches uh, that eventually choked out the plant. And Jesus went on to explain that, that there are two main ways that this choking out happens in life. And so the two things that tend to distract our hearts is worry and wealth. Worry and wealth. And we talked about worry before we looked at some passages from the gospels before about uh, about that and we, we even looked at wealth as well but but these two principles we, we find ourselves uh in this conundrum of life worrying about things that are never going to happen uh that might happen that's what causes our worry many times um, and then wealth, just the uh, deceitfulness of, of wealth. We, we have a sense of, uh, I can manage this, you know, on my own. I can provide for this on my own. You know, I don't kind of need to ask God for help in, in certain areas and parts of our life because we're easily distracted by uh, kind of pursuing that wealth. And that can happen through work and, uh, you know, good hard work ethic. Nothing wrong with that, but tearing carried to its end, uh, can get in the place of a relationship with God and, and dependency upon God and not dependence uh, you know, on wealth. He wants us to, to rely on Him and trust in Him in all things. And He says, and all these other things will be added unto you. Just trust in me first. All the other stuff, all other stuff will come, come together. And that really fits worry and wealth. All these other things that we busy ourselves and our life about. There was a story of, of a rich man, and he was miserable with life. And so this rich man went to a religious leader, went to a rabbi, and, and he wanted to talk about this depression that he was feeling in life, this kind of emptiness that he uh, had in life. So uh, the rabbi uh, decided to use objects to explain uh, what he's feeling and why. So he chose a window. In a mirror, first the window. He says, come over here and, and look out of this window here. What do you see? He says, well, I see uh, I see other people. I see men and women and children, uh, and they're playing, and they're kind of carrying on about their life. And then he handed him uh, the mirror, the mirror. He says, well, what, what do you see in that mirror? And, of course, he sees the reflection, reflection of himself. 
in that mirror. So the rabbi said, behold, the, the window and the mirror are made of glass, but there's, there's a difference between the window and the mirror. And the difference is uh, that in the mirror, it is covered by a little bit of silver. And no sooner is that silver added, than you cease to see others and you only see yourself. So understanding uh, the needs of others, caring for the needs of others, uh, having a good balance in life of providing for uh, certainly yourself and your family and things of that nature, but also making sure you care for the needs of others and serving God with the provisions that he's given us. Uh, not to overload ourselves on all the stuff that we think we need and overlook all the needs and concerns of people around us. And this is that, that worry and also wealth that we find that comes and creeps in that Jesus talks about. And it has a tendency to, to choke out uh, the power of God uh, at work and potentially at work in someone's life. And the result of that seed, much like the hardened heart, the seed of the kingdom of God never comes to fruition. And the third type of a part that we see defined here in this parable is uh, the defeated heart. The defeated heart. The parable goes on to say, the sea fell, some of it fell on a rocky ground, and where there was uh, not much soul. So kind of like a hardened heart in a way, but, but a little bit different, because the seed immediately sprouted. But since there was no depth, he said, no depth in that soul, it soon just withered away. No depth. You know, this is, you know, someone that has great intentions and starts out uh, with these great intentions, but, but fails to follow through. Someone who makes, you may say, empty promises or shallow promises uh, to you and, and to the Lord. What we, we understand what this type of person, you know, looks like. And quite honestly, what it looks like within the church is, you know, when uh, if someone first comes in and maybe for faith and makes a decision to Christ and they're so excited and they, they have all these uh, anticipations and uh, doing these things and serving in these ways. And they may even start that way. Hopefully they do. But over time, it, it kind of it kind of fades, it kind of fades because they really didn't go deep with that faith. You know, they, they kind of stayed shallow with it. And, and so eventually the hardships kind of come and it, it just kind of defeats you, that it withers away to the point for some, they're just not around or anywhere to be found anymore. And it's, of course, very, very sad, very frustrating uh, to see someone so excited and so active and so engaged and then that they're not they're not there anymore. They're not engaged. They're they're, they're really not plugged in and, and serving in any way or capacity. But it, it's it's something that can potentially, like these other conditions, it can happen to us too. Just like the heart and heart, it, it can happen to us too. We can get hard to the things of this world. We can feel defeated also uh, by difficulties that come in, and, and we think. You know, well, I, I just can't anymore. And so eventually we just stop doing and we stop doing less and less. And eventually uh, we can find ourselves not doing much of anything at all and serving, serving God. And the result of this seed, much like the other ones, is the kingdom of God never comes to fruition. But finally and lastly, and of course, I think strategically Jesus placed this fourth seed and, and describes this fourth seed last. This fourth type of seed is the hopeful heart. <coughs> hopeful heart. So there was a seed that fell on good, fertile soil. And the season of great harvest came forth. And, and he said it produced a uh, hundredfold. It, it did more uh, with what it was given. It, it multiplied itself. It grew. It brought forth a crop and a usable crop. So it, again, it's last because this is kind of the thrust of uh, this parable, this story. 
True, you know, there are failures. There are going to be failures. He wanted to start with kind of the bad news first, the difficulties first. You know, someone has, says they have good news and bad news, which, which do you want first? Well, Jesus went with the bad news, okay? And then he came with the good news. But uh, the bad news, yes, we're going to fail. We're going to struggle. We're going to feel defeated sometimes. Uh, we're going to get hardened to the things of this world. We're going to be distracted uh, by things going on in our life. And we're going to need to get back on the right path. But the good news, the good news is God has already uh, made a way and a plan for us in the victory of Jesus. And so this, this last part, this last person, hears the word and he acts and she acts accordingly. He responds to it and from it takes root and, and has deep roots and continues to grow, continues to flourish. And we thank God for people like this, where it gives us hope, it gives the world hope, um, that even though they are distracted, even though that was a possibility of being defeated or uh, to be hardened, uh, that the hope is in Jesus. Hope is that there is a better way, and that if we continue to be faithful in following His ways and His will for our life, uh, there is that great and grand possibility of, of goodness and good things happening, not just to us, but to the world around us. Some years ago, uh, there was a story that was run on CBS. You, you might remember Charles Corrales, and uh, this was a, a series that he ran on the road with Charles Corrales, and, and so these were human interest type feel-good stories. And so uh, some 12 years prior, he had visited this man in this town of Stanton, Virginia, and there was a park, and uh, it was just this beautiful, sprawling park uh, with trees and uh, bushes, and just you could tell it was meticulously cared for. And as he he said he entered this park, he but he thought, man, there must be a team of people working on this park because this is a huge park. Yeah, you know, this has got to take an incredible amount of time. And to his surprise. There was one man, 83 years of age, that was caring for and tending to this park. And so, of course, the first thought on, on his mind was keeping it going. How is this going to keep going past this, this man's lifetime? And that was uh, the concern that this 83-year-old this man had was, you know, what would, would happen after. And so uh, as he left, as Charles Carl left, his time spending with him, um, he got some kind of feedback in the years following. Um, he got uh, the message that uh, first that the the man had passed away, and so now the the reality is that he's no longer there to care for um, this park. And the rest of the story was that someone had come along prior to that. Uh, some months after the story was aired, and had visited the park, and were just amazed at it. And, and it was uh, a young lady, and she was actually from the West Coast, and she didn't live there. And uh, and so they had a good time. He showed her all around the park, and she left and went home. And so he reached out to her and said, "I would like to offer something to you. I would like for you to come and to live here into this guest house that is close to the park." And, and to be able to tend for and to care for this park. And so she did so. She decided to, to pull up and to, to go there and to be at the park and to care for it. So when Charles Corral uh, came back some 12 years later, um, what he saw uh, to his delight was the park was in great condition. Um, and it was actually in better shape than it had been before because she had gotten others to come and be a part of this park because they enjoyed it and loved it so, so much. And so the end of the story, Charles Corral closed the show by saying that um, he would be pleased to know that weeds and thorns had not taken over uh, his lovely garden, the, the older man that had passed. And he concluded by saying also that where the seeds of love are planted, 
Only good fruit comes forth. So maybe that's what Jesus is trying to say with this parable this morning. That goodness you know, does have a chance in this life. And the way is hard. You know, he, he didn't uh, sugarcoat it. He put the, the tough stuff first. It's hard. There's going to be a lot of obstacles on life's journey, on life's way. And granted, more than not, you know, seeds of goodness sometimes wither away. Sometimes they do, as Jesus said. But where good ground abounds, there will be an abundance of harvest. And that's hope. That's good news for the world around us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, thank you for the hope that we have in Christ. Lord, for the challenges that we face in life. Lord, it's not for us to just sweep them underneath the rug and, and then hide them away and say, no, like, all is good, all is fine. Certainly we need to be real with you and with others and let them know that, yes, we place our trust in Christ, but we, we still have struggles. Sometimes we, we feel defeated. Sometimes we're, we're just hardened because we've had just gone through so much difficulty in life. And sometimes we're we're distracted, we're distracted uh, from the things going on around us, and, and we, we kind of get off the path that you've laid before us. But the hope that we have in Christ, that, that, that we know there's a better way, we know that Christ has provided the way for us to have right relationship with our Heavenly Father, that full and abundant life that is found from obedience in Christ, and, and the life everlasting that's promised in your word. So Lord, we, we place our trust in you this day. And we know, we know that there is hope. There's hope for this world because you are in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll be down front to receive anyone that needs to make a decision today, whether it is to accept Christ. The hope that is within us as your Lord and Savior, or to join this church. Uh, family and to be a part of Rosewood First Baptist and this journey that we're all on together. And, and we've already admitted that no one's perfect here this morning. Jesus kind of laid that out nicely for us that we, we tend to wander sometimes, uh, but we know the way back and we know that God is there to accept us with open arms and that he loves us and he cares for us. And uh, we know that that's the way to that full and abundant life and life everlasting. So I uh, if you feel the Lord leading you this morning, I encourage you to do so as we stand and sing uh, this closing song together.
like to remember again, uh, Sandy and Glenn, this is their last Sunday with us here uh, this morning. So I'd like to ask them to join me at the back uh, after this closing prayer uh, so that people can greet them and wish them well on their uh, their trip, their journey uh, to be with family. And uh, we do wish them well and we thank them uh, for their time here at Rosewood in service to this community as, as well. So let's go to the Lord and pray as we close this morning. Lord, thank you for being with us, uh, for reminding us of your message, of your word that goes out. And uh, Lord, we know that it does not return void. So, uh, Lord, as we do scatter that word among people, we know that we're going to face and encounter people uh, like Jesus described. And sometimes they're hardened, and sometimes they're distracted, and, and, and sometimes uh, just, they just kind of wither away. Uh, Lord, they, they start out good and it just ends. Uh, so, Lord, may we not be defeated by that. Uh, or maybe continue to be faithful to share the good news with others and just encourage us, Lord, if we feel ourselves finding ourselves with that type of heart, uh, Lord, that we can find ourselves back onto the path of, of righteousness and the straight path that you place for us and then following you in your ways, and Lord, knowing that you are with us, Lord, and we can trust you with our lives, Lord. So we give you thanks uh, for your goodness. We, we thank you for the truths of your word. Pray you go with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you.